Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you this morning. I thank you. I thank you for what you have inside of me, Father God. I thank you for the word that the words that are stirring within me, Father God. And I'm going to rest in you. I trust you, Father God, that the word that you have for today will come forward. I rest in you. I give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So who am I? Who are we? How do we answer that question of who am I? And it's a question that, to me, it's a journey. It's a lifelong discovery of discovering who we are. Not only who am I as a person, who am I as a minister? What kind of minister am I? <laughs> what kind of friend am I? What kind, who am I? You know, who, who are we? And how do we, how do we discover that? Um, I read an article this past week, and I really didn't agree with any of his. I mean, they, I'm sure he said there are three main. And I thought the first one would have been, you know, we're going to find our identity in God. No. He says the three main ways that people discover who we are, the, the question, the answer to that question is, I am what I do. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I am what I do. Okay, a therapist. I'm a therapist. I'm a gardener. I'm a constructionist, Const uh, engineer, construction engineer, architect. <laughs> As I, I'm looking at Chris in the back, and he's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Love you, Chris. <laughs> but I am what I do. Okay, what happens when you don't have a good day at the office? Are you going to feel confident about what you, who you are? If you base it on that, okay, maybe, maybe you'll have good days every day. But I can't imagine being a doctor now in this pandemic and saying, I am a doctor. And I know they've got to be frustrated with the number of cases, number of cases that they lose, you know, when a patient dies as a nurse. You know, you cannot bank your whole identity on what you do. Amen. It is part of who you are, Amen. but it's not your identity of your, your, I always say your true identity. Who am I? Who am I? How do I discover that? The second way he said was in what people say. <laughs> what are friends and what others say? <laughs> I'm basing my identity on, on what others say. Mm, that's good. I almost called up my friends and asked them to give me. <laughs> I said almost, Miles. <laughs> He's shaking his head. He's like, no. <laughs> almost called, called you all up and go, you know, describe me to, you know, how, how would you describe me? Yeah, almost. But that's not who I am. That's not all. Those are characteristics of me. And I'm sure some would say, I'm loud. Yes, that's me. I'm funny. I can be. I'm an encourager. Thank you. Um, and, and please, that's not an <laughs> invitation. <laughs> Thank you, PK. <laughs> that's why I said I almost did it. <laughs> um, because that's not all of who I am. Yes, I am encouraging because I have to first encourage myself. Amen. So it comes out that I'm an encourager because I, I look, when I look at people, I see the best in you. I see the possibilities in you. And sometimes people are not ready to hear that. So I have to pull back on being encouraging because I have to meet that person where they are. Again, that's part of who you are. And, you know, what happens when friends change? Or when you do something that they don't like and their opinions of you change. <laughs> how, how do you base your identity on that? It's still fluid. It's something that's, that's subject to change. So I'm like, okay, that's, not, that's still not who we are. That's a part of who we are. Again, who am I? And I know we've all asked ourselves that question. We start asking that question right before puberty. <laughs> You know, 
that's that's why this is a journey because it's you know every 10 years or so i know we we change we change our hair hello <laughs> change our clothes change our style things that we like change <laughs> mindsets change things that we used to believe change so again we this is a constant this is a journey that's why i call it the journey of discovering because we're ever searching, ever questioning who we are, right? Who am I? Who am I? The third way he said that, you know, was the third main reason that he said people identified themselves is by what I have. Yeah, I know. That's the same <laughs> reaction I had. Like, okay, our things, you know, okay, if you have things, you know, okay houses, cars, you know, you base yourself on that. And I guess to me, that's kind of tied into what other people say. Because, you know, if we just look at social media, <laughs> we know that people based on their likes, they change their hair, they change their clothes based on what's hot, what's fashion, what's in. Um, you know, to me, that's why I said what you have, you know, that, that to me is based on, on what people think of you. You're measuring your identity. I need, I need Air Jordans because Michael Jordan is great. And, you know, I need to be identified as, you know, part of that greatness. You know, Tommy Hilfiger, oh, I love that. You know, <laughs> the name brand people identify because of what people say. People, other people put um, a high value on that. And so therefore, if I'm valuing my, myself, if I'm valuing who I am based on what other people say, then that matters to me. But that's not all of who I am. That's not all of who you are. And I hope you know your identity is greater than that. It comes from, it should come from within and not from without. Days are neither good or bad. DJ, thank you. Wrong tree. That's right. It, they can be challenging. Right. So whether it's a challenging day or, or a day where everything is going the way I want it. Mm -hmm. Let's say it like that. Mm -hmm. Words matter. Mm -hmm. Words matter. And that's, that's part of us discovering our identity. When we are discovering our identity and we're resting on what other people say, those words matter. Those words matter in discovering who I am. If that's where I'm going to put my hope on, that what you think of me, what happens when, you know, I, I, I cringe all the time when I hear parents say to their kids, you're going to be, you're no good, just like you're no good father. And they hear that over and over and over so that begins to be the, the voice in their head. Oh, I'm not good at anything. I read an article once where a gentleman got the word loser tattooed on his forehead. Um, and I saw that and I go, why would anybody do that? You know, so I read the article. And in the article, the journalist was asking the tattoo artist, why would you do that? You know, he goes, well, we tattoo, you know, what we, you ask us what we, and we do what you're asking us to do. So that, that's my job, <laughs> you know? And so then they asked the gentleman, what, what motivated you? What drove you? What, what were you thinking to get the loser tattooed on your head? He goes, well, when I look at myself in the morning, that's what I see. And he goes, because... It has been drilled into me over and over. You're no good. You're lousy at your job. You're lousy. You know, even as a kid, he said, you know, he was told over and over and over again, you're a loser. You can't, you can't play sports. You can't do anything. You're just a loser. You're never going to amount to anything. And that was the voice that he heard. In the morning when he woke up and he looked at himself, that's what he saw. He saw a loser. But that's not who he is. Amen. And if I could be next to him, I would tell him that's not who you are. Amen. You're not, you're not an athlete just because you can play sports. Sometimes we're athletic. <laughs> right. 
You know, sometimes we have a talent at playing a specific sport. And all athletes are, are, you know, not athletic at all sports. They have something that, that they do. They're a runner. They're good at running. Are they good at playing basketball? So they're a basketball star. Are they, you know, even sometimes if you're good at basketball, you may not make it to the NBA. You may not be that type of athlete that are, have that opportunity to make it so you're not a basketball star. But we're not basing who I am on what I can do. Yeah, I can play basketball. I, I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> or I used to be. I haven't played in a while. But I'm not, that's not my identity. That's not the answer to who I am. That's not the answer to who you are. This is a journey. How do I discover? And this morning, I just want to, I just want to give you a guideline. I guess it's where I'm going of, of where, you know, we know our identity is in God. I hope that, that um, I know PK has done a marvelous job the last few weeks of talking about identity and all the different unbecoming of what we're not and how, I mean, just wonderful. And this started because of one of the messages that, that um, she had said on identity. And one of the things that we do as believers, or maybe I shouldn't say we do, one of the things I did as a believer, I believe that everybody had to worship and be like me. I, I come from a Kojic background, Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal. Holy rollers. Woohoo! Yeah, we're loud, we're proud, shouting in the aisles. That's who we are. And I believe that you had to, um, when you felt the Holy Spirit, you had to have a visual, you know, wave your hand, say amen. You had to do something. You know, so when I first came out here to California, I was part of a Baptist church, which is uh, a, a, a really eye opener for me because, you know, Baptists are more laid back. And so I was, I was struggling in my faith because I believed I'm like the pastor would say something. I would be amen. And everybody else around me would be like, Phew. I'd be jumping and shouting in the aisles and everybody else, you know, every now and then you like, you see a hand wave again, who am I? How do, and how, as Christians, we judge according to what my opinion of what a Christian is and what a Christian should do. Everybody's looking at me strange. Well, that's in the Bible, too. Christians have been judging. You're not a Christian if you don't. Let's, let's, in fact, let's go there. Antioch, the church in Antioch, um, Acts chapter 15. A little background on the church in Antioch. Paul um, had been teaching in the area, and, and uh, Paul was with Barnabas at this time. And they had been teaching and preaching, and, and, you know, Paul's message was to the Gentiles, to those that were not of the Jewish heritage, not of the Jewish faith, because it's not only a nationality, but it is a religion. <laughs> so those that were not born Jews and were not of the Jewish faith, Anybody outside, that's Gentiles, the outsiders, the message calls them. So Paul's message was to them. And so he preached and he came back and he says, you know, the Holy Spirit fell on them as well as it did on us. God gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit and they were, you know, speaking in tongue and doing all this. He was, it was a praise report, right? Well, the, the Jewish believers in, in Antioch, Acts chapter 15, start at verse 1. So some men came down from Judah and began teaching the brethren, unless you are circumcised in accordance with the customs of Moses, you can't be saved. What? What do you mean? I just received the Holy Spirit. I just, I believed. I did everything the apostles told me. And the Holy Spirit fell on me, and I, I believe I'm saved. What is this circumcision? <laughs> they said, unless you are circumcised, you cannot be saved. Paul and Barnabas disagreed greatly and debated with them. So it was determined that Paul and Barnabas and some of the others from their group would go to Jerusalem 
to the apostles. They would have a meeting with the apostles and the elders, and they would discuss this issue. This issue of whether or not, as a Gentile, I needed to be circumcised in order to be saved. All right? So they go down and they have a, a discussion and skip to verse 6. The apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter. After a long debate, Peter got up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth that the Gentiles would hear the message of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows and understands the heart, testifies to them, giving them the Holy Spirit. Right? Good so far. Just as he did unto us. He made no distinction between us and them. Cleansing them, cleansing their hearts by faith in Jesus. Now then, why are we adding? And I like this. Why are you, why are we testing God by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither we nor our fathers were able to bear? Why do we do this? Why do we as Christians now, I'm Christian, I've been saved since I was 12, 1987. Okay, knee high to a duck. I never heard that. <laughs> uh, I've been saved for a while. So why would I judge somebody else's salvation on where I am now when they're just coming in? Why would I put struggles on them that I no longer adhere to? Are, are hard for me to bear. And that's what they were doing. They were putting struggles on, on, they were trying to put regulations, rules and regulations on the new Christians that was hard for them. And imagine getting circumcised as a man, as an adult. <laughs> All the men in the sanctuary are going, no. As an adult. We do circumcision is usually done when you're eight days old. So imagine as an adult, you're just now, you're, uh, tra you're getting into the faith as an adult, 40 years old, and you're forced to get circumcised at 40. That's tough. And that's men. What about the women of the faith? How are we, how would you judge a woman, you know, just being, you know, a, co a convert that says, oh, you're not saved if you're what? I can't get circumcised. <laughs> Praise God for that. <laughs> but I mean, how are we judging? What are we judging? We do that even in, 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 the, in the particular denomination that you have. Again, I grew up Kojic. My denomination would say, um, you are not saved if you're wearing pants, PK. You can't wear pants. Diane, you're not saved. You're, you're wearing pants. <laughs> You know, as for a woman, Bill. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, we, we thank you for wearing pants. <laughs> as for a woman, you're not saved because you're wearing pants. You're not saved. I have on colored lipstick. If, I, if you have on fingernail polish. Yeah, jewelry. I cut my hair. I can't be saved. Because a woman's hair is your glory. You do not cut your hair. You put your identity in things that you do. Do we do that as Christians? Things that we do. Not just what I do, but things that we do that make us Christian. Hmm. Do, do I have to speak in tongue if I'm a Christian then? Do I, do I have to, you know, Pentecostal, wear your dresses to your knees? Things that we do. Does things that we do make us a Christian? Huh. Who are we? Who am I? The journey of discovering our identity. We can't, we can't just put our identity in those things because things change. Like I said, the things that we believed, I believed that growing up, that a woman shouldn't wear pants. Look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I wouldn't even be saved. <laughs> yeah. I, I, grew, I grew up and I believed that and we taught that. So anybody coming in, would be taught, you got to wear it, throw your pants away. I remember, oh, man, it hurt me. My mom, when we first joined the church, she took all of our pants, and we had a bonfire. 
Because as good Christians, we're not even going to give them away because then we're causing other women to sin. But yes, ma'am, that's where we were. We're causing other women to sin if I gave another woman my pants because then they would be wearing pants. And we're not going to cause other Christians to sin. So we, all my pants. <laughs> I, 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 and I cried. I literally cried because we just went school shopping and I bought, you know, what I considered stylist, you know, and I was like, ooh. And we had a bonfire because our identity was not from within. Our identity came from what we did. The fact that your hair to a certain length, who you are, is, that's not, that's more than who you are. Your, you know, your, your hair, your clothes, your job, your friends, and I thank God we have friends, but that's not your identity. That's not who you are. Who you are is much more than that. And we can start in the beginning of the, of the Bible. Who you are, you are an, made in the image and likeness of God. Hallelujah. That's who you are. Whether you have long hair, short hair, no hair. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Where you, you do mini skirts, long skirts, or all the way to your ankles. It's not based on what you do. It's not based on what others say. It's not based on your job. It's not based on the things that you have. God loves you. That's never going to change. That's one thing that's a fact. You are the image and likeness of God. Whether you go to a Baptist church, whether you go to a Pentecostal church, whether right now you're not at any church, yeah. you're still the image and likeness of God. Whether you're straight, gay, bi, you're made in the image and likeness of God. Amen. That does not change. That does not change by what we do. That does not change by who we sit next to. That does not change. Okay? Get that in. If you don't get anything else, get that. Who am I? How do I, how do I, how do I set who I am? Where do I get that from? How do we, you know, it's not based on Facebook likes. And if it was, God bless me, because I barely go on Facebook. <laughs> so if I was basing it on how many likes I had, how many times people reshare what I, what I post, I would be a most miserable person. But thank God that's not, that's not who I am. Thank God that's not who you are. That's not, that, that's, that's not even, I wouldn't even say that, that, that should not even come into the question of who I am, how many likes I got. That shouldn't come into the discussion of, of how do I figure out who I am. That, that shouldn't come, but it does. A lot of people base their, their hopes, their dreams, their identity hang on what people say. And I hope that today, if that was you, that you have another, you, you can take your, ho your hope off of that hook and place it within your own self. Amen? Who am I? Who am I? The journey of discovering identity, our identity. Our identity. The journey of discovering our identity should be in also a journey of discovering who God is. Who is the Father? Jesus tells us over and over, he prays that we are one, even as he and the Father are one. We are one. So if we're one with Jesus, we're in Jesus, and we're one with the Father, we're one with God. We are. Um, in the, the Old Testament, it says you are little gods. Because you are, you are his image and likeness. You are his image and likeness, not just a shadow, not just a cheap invitation. But when he breathed into us the breath of life, he breathed into us himself. Thank you. <laughs> he breathed into us himself. He breathed into us life. He breathed into us hope, peace, joy, love, 
All those things are in us already. The problem is sometimes we don't see it because we don't search from within. I was struggling with peace last night because I was looking for peace without. <laughs> I was looking for it to be in, in a finished thing and said the end at the end. <laughs> I always do that whether you guys see it or not. It says, amen, the end. <laughs> and this one, it doesn't. And I, it, it, that, stole, that was trying to steal my peace, trying to steal my peace. And for a little while, it did. But that's not who I am. That's not who you are. That's not the finished story. The finished story of who you are rests in a father that loves us all. Rests in a father that when he looks at you, he sees himself. When he looks at you, he sees righteousness. He sees salvation. He sees a finished package. We may not see that when we look in the mirror, but when we see, when we look through God's eyes, and thank you, DJ, that's, that's something I learned through meditation and during the meditation classes. I had to quit seeing myself with all the negative things that I didn't like about myself. I was identifying myself on, I'm fat, <laughs> um, you know, I'm this, I'm that. That's who, I, that's who I was trying to identify myself as. And a lot of times that's who we identify ourselves as. The things that other people have told us. You know, you're pretty for a big girl. And so does that mean I'm pretty if I lose weight? Yeah, really. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Again, I wasn't fishing. This is just things that, that um, you know, we, we say we hang our identity on things that people have said to us. Growing up, you know, the, the words that we hear over and over get ingrained, and sometimes they're the louder voices that we hear, you know? For me as a child, people would describe me as um, Dee Dee, which that's my mom's nickname, Dee Dee's sick child. I no longer had a name. Wow. That was my name. Shoot. When people would come up and mama would say, hi, oh, hi, Dee Dee, and oh, yes, Dee Dee's sick child. That, that was how they, they identified me. Wow. That's not my, that's not, that's not who I am. Thank God that's not who I am. Because if I was Dee Dee's sick child, I might be Dee Dee's dead child by now. Amen. Yeah. I, I, I thank God that's not who I rested my identity. I struggled with that for a long time because I was sick. And that was, that was how, I, I mean, I was, that, that, was, that was me for a while. I was very, very sick. But that's not who I am. God healed me. So I'm no longer that sick child. Amen. I was never, that was never my identity. That was something I went through. Mm -hmm. That was something I went through. Again, things, how do we describe ourselves? Are you that abused spouse? Are you, are you that bully? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you... That, that hurt person? Are you that accident victim? Those are things that we go through. Are you that cancer overcomer? That's part of who you are, but that's not your identity. That's something you went through, and thank God he healed you. Thank God you went through it. Again, let's not confuse searching for our identity to things that we go through things that happened to us, things that people said about us, things outside does not make us inside. And at least I hope it doesn't. I hope we are unbecoming those things, unbecoming what people said about me, unbecoming basing my hope on what people say about me, unbecoming all those things. Because that's never who you were, and it's definitely not who you are. Amen. We, and let us, especially as a church, let's not put any burden 
on people, on what we judge them to be as you need to do this as being a Christian. Amen. You're a believer? Praise God. That's between you. God will work out the do's and don'ts of, for you. You're on a journey of discovering your Christianity. And our job is just to help you get on the journey. Whatever part of the road you start on, and the road is wide. <laughs> Thank God he made it wide and didn't make it according to these Jews here. Didn't make it according to the ideal of what a Baptist would say. Because if you ask a Baptist and a, and a Pentecostal, the road is different. There, there are rules that you have to, have to do that are um, specific to each denomination. But that doesn't make you a Christian. That makes you a Baptist. That makes you a Pentecostal. That makes you a Catholic. That makes you whatever. Still under the umbrella of a Christianity, of believing, but it, it's specific to that denomination. And even then, that branch Christianity is still limited. It still does not tell me my true identity. My true identity is I am a child of God. You are a child of God. Whole, complete, needing nothing else to be that. God didn't make you broken. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't make you. <laughs> Sometimes we are broken, but God didn't make you that way. When he made you, he made you whole and complete. That's who we need to trust. That's the voice that needs to be the loudest voice when we look in the mirror in the morning. When we ask ourselves, who am I? We need to hear God's voice. Not my voice, not PK's voice. And, and hopefully, if you hear our voices, our voices are encouraging you to hear God's voice, <laughs> are, are showing you the way, are, are echoing things that God has said about you. Yeah. Who am I? When you ask that, fundamental answer should come up. We are a lot of things. But that fundamental answer that I am a child of God, beautiful, wondrously and marvelously made, created in his image and likeness, that should be your answer. Yes. Amen. I'm Pastor Karen of Oasis of the Valley, and I'm here with Pastor Christine and Dr. John, and we'd like to share something with you. If you don't live in the local area and you'd like to be part of our Oasis Fellowship, we've got a way to connect. We'd like to get to know you personally by video conference calls and telephone calls, and Dr. John will tell you more about how that came about. It was just a few weeks ago, in literally one week's time, I got several emails from people in different parts of the United States and even overseas who were interested in finding a church in their area that's preaching the same powerful message that we are and in the way we are that's quite unique. And unfortunately, I couldn't give them really an answer. I know of a couple of churches and friends that are, are ministering like this, but honestly, there's not too many. And we are truly trying to press forward into a whole new arena in God right now. And uh, 
what wound up happening was that the thought occurred to me, well, we've got all this amazing technology. Why can't we pastor them with the video conferencing and stuff that you yeah. were talking about and minister into their life? And who knows what God will be able to do through that. With enough people, maybe be able to start a church out there. Sounds good. So if you're interested, please click the link below and we'll explain more.